everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode I'm going to have a look at, again at some of the options for the um, armory upgrades. There's quite a few of them and it's a little bit overwhelming to start with. So Desht, the current maintainer of Pneumatic Rust Repressurizer, has given me some tips. So let's have a look at those. So I'm going to start with looking at the chest plate because one of the things they suggested is have a look at one of the upgrades in there and that's the security upgrade. So it says with the security upgrade installed the chest plate grants you protection from fire and lava at a significant air cost. Air is rapidly dumped from the chest plate to extinguish nearby flames and keep you cool. It will even slowly solidify nearby lava. So that means we have a bit of armor, lava protection which is great. Um, Magnet upgrade we've already done with. Charging upgrade I think we've also done with this one here. What does it say? Oh, say so it will not, uh, so the magnet it will not pull from immersive craft engineering conveyor belts, which is actually very good, as we've already noticed as it happens. The dispenser upgrade allows your items to be blocked to launch. Just we've read that and we've done that one already. And that's actually all of the upgrades for the chest plate. Let's go back on that one and have a look at the um, pneumatic craft. I would like to look at the boots. Now, where are they? Because I've got to see the chest plate, helmet, and leggings here. Now, where are the boots? Hopefully, we can find them. If not, I'll just put them in the current boots I've got on. This is strange. I would expect them to be where the others are. Because he suggests I put 10 uh, upgrades in there. So, let's have a look at the boots I've got on. So, let's put, uh, actually, if I right click this, would be the best thing to put the boots in here. And have a look at the upgrades. And I have actually got 10 jet boot upgrades in here. So let's have a look at what the 10 jet boot upgrades do for us. Now, if you look here and press U for options, then we can have a look at jet boots. What it says we can enable jet boots, we can press a key for that. So it's bound to control F, which is short for flight. It's bound to control F and the builder's mode is bound to shift F. So we can actually do some different and then do different techniques. So the, the rule is for traveling you use the build without um you use the non builder mode and for um building you use the builder mode so let's do control f and turn it on and then look up and you know, the way you look up it's the way you fly so, it's, so i just press space and i go up as you can see it's fairly fast and when you take it off you're not you're hovering so let's press f5 and have a look at what we're doing here we're actually not moving at all so that's 10 upgrades for you so i want to fly down there i just press um W does press W and press shift, don't I? Oh wow, I'm going too fast. So let's just now build a mode. Let's turn that one on. Shift F. So now build a mode is enabled. So I guess the builder mode just allows you to fly straight up like a normal creative flight. It's supposed to be slightly slow, it doesn't seem that slow to me. And it also gives you braking like braking normal. So that's one. Now this uses a significant air cost. I don't need these blocks down here anyway anymore. So we can get rid of those blocks. So we'll have a we'll go down here and now we shall build something else. In fact, let's just press. I can actually just turn these off, of course. Control F. And because we got some other upgrades, we don't. I'm not sure which ones it was. We don't hurt ourselves when we land. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these. I was using these for charging up. On this one here, as another suggestion, I put in some speed upgrades, and sure enough, the speed upgrades do make a difference. So let's have a look at that. Let's get onto this one. Uh, stand on it. And right click it and you can see the speed that these things are going into here and this is actually already at 10 bar so you can see that, that would charge it up really fast but i'm going to use an aerial interface so let's have a look at the recipe for aerial interfaces because i've actually got one built very expensive in terms of bits and pieces and i think i've got another villager sitting there i have what have we got this time an outfitter oh cool <laughs> they, they're giving me some good good ones i actually got the last one i got was an electrician so this is the aerial interface and the recipe for that is four pressurized chambers no big deal at all two ender pearls actually not much of a big deal to be honest with you pressure chamber walls no and just the wither skeleton skull might be difficult if you've not been doing withers so you put this thing down so let's go and put this thing down over where we were and as you can see the speed upgrades on your leggings really do make a make a difference so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it down here like this i'm going to remove this one from here i think that's the right place shift right click it oh yeah, well, not really what i want to do is this one i want to get rid of let's put this one back into here we're losing a bit of pressure but that's not a matter too much 
click it in and that'll charge that one up and then get rid of the rest of these we don't need any of these now of course in fact these are actually used as part of the break this off these are actually used as part of the recipe for the next thing we're actually going to make oh, there's no space in my inventory no space in my inventory right so what i'm going to do now is put down the interface we'll do that first of all so i'm going to put that down one block away from there about here you'll see why in a second oh they don't stack is that what the problem with those is i see okay and i think a good place to put it is around about here it doesn't actually really matter very much but it does need power so i'm going to connect some power to the top of this i was thinking about doing it nicely with it with a um whatever it's called a post but I'm, I think we'll just do it the quick way today so we'll just attach that into there like that and then right click this and you'll see that this is actually getting power and that power you can transfer to yourself here like this it won't work until because it's got problems and it says not enough pressure it needs at least 10 bar and it's linked to me so we need to give it some pressure so let's do that first of all so have I picked up all four of those things now I don't think I have but something's floating around here oh it's in my offhand of course yeah <laughs> one two three there should be another one somewhere where's it gone to tell you what let's put the magnet on i've actually programmed that to control m i think so the magnet's now enabled so i should be able to find the other one of those oh i know what the, the drone will have picked it up won't it and put it away so now we connect this into into pressure so let's do that like that and this is now going to get pressure the pressure is going to build up fairly rapidly up to over 10 bar because this has got uh, it doesn't take long for this compressor to work but the next thing we're going to do is we're also going to do this i'm going to connect down here um wonder which is the best way to do this probably done it slightly wrong i want to put this the charging module the charging module it needs to point onto this now the trouble is i've got to put down a piece of pipe before i can do that so let's just remove this piece of pipe here and put down the piece of pipe here like that uh like that and of course it's just decreasing the pressure of this one and what i need to do is put the charging module on here and i can't do that <laughs> so what i probably have to do is remove this let's just remove this and let's put the charging module on first like that and then we can connect the pipes back up again no we won't do that first we'll just put this down so where's it gone to like that so now it's connected here because it's leaking air because I've got a pipe in there we'll put that down there and that should then have everything as I want it to be connected except for I put, I've got to put the power again so now we're getting pressure from here coming into this and this charging module is pointing at or actually touching the um, aerial interface so now what we have to do with this one and we don't have to but we will do we'll add an advanced PCB to this so if I have a look at this from the book for example if I shift right click this we'll come straight to that recipe and if you go back a page now I think let's go wrong place let's try that again shift right click it and then go back here previous so that tells you about the charging module so when it's connected to a so here we go the module to an aerial interface to charge your items in your own inventory when applied pressure to the piece of an advanced PCB the pressure gauge module to the pressure gauge module is that right i'm reading that wrong i think the module's charging rate increases from 10 milliseconds again to 100 so it's five, 10 times faster i'm not quite sure which pressure gauge module is re relevant in here but no i think it just i actually think it does mean here let's just right click it on that because it does actually work on that one so now this just needs power again let's put the power back on again take a second right click this here and then right click this here now my armor should start to be charging up in fact you can see it's already all of its 10 bar now and it's got enough pressure in here but you have to configure the sides and this bit this is the bit that caught me out so i need the left hand side for armor slots and the front which is basically here we can also do this i've got a piece of redstone in my builder's back mining backpack i think so it should be between episodes i also went and looked for some diamonds and i found a few so i found that 38 blocks plus the one on the surface i only found one on the surface 
And in the same area, I also found some coal, as you can see, plenty of coal I got from which we need, and some tin. Clusters. It was a bit tricky because it was just above lava, but that's not so important. Did I take the redstone out of there? I didn't, did I? <laughs> Let's put the redstone down here. And then we right click this and we select here the redstone. So it emits a redstone when it's connected to a player. So it's connected to me now. So whatever I do now, if I go right over here, I've just picked up something else, I'm sure. I've got the magnet still on. Let me just turn the magnet off again. Um, I think I'm picking up some bees now, but I probably don't want to be picking up some bees at the moment. So let's just turn the magnet off. In fact, I, think, I heard it go click as I went past here. Yeah, I picked up the forest you'll be I'll just have to go and put that back again. April's backpack. And I'll have picked it up a bit at the back of this. Yes, I picked up the princess. <laughs> and I don't think that's this one probably be all right. Actually, let's have a look at this one. Yes, I just picked up some drones that were lying around so we'll put the princess back in here let that carry on so now so we can go over here now we could turn on our flight a jetpack again as you can see we've got 10 everywhere so let's turn the jetpack on um, control and F and let's jump and you see that the the air pressure doesn't go down we're, st we're stuck in here because we're in at we're at enough space, or I don't know what the range of the aerial interface is, but it does seem to be quite a reasonable amount, as you can see. Let's turn it off again, like that. So that is, I think that's probably going to be a good thing for the end, anyway. So this will be now charged up, and it also charges because you've got inventory interfacing here. Any electrical items in your in, in you on you will be charged up. So, for example, let's take out of my bauble slot the portable temperature regulator. It doesn't work in bauble slots yet, but um, that's going to become a thing. There's going to be a change. So now, if we have a look at this, that's 400k. You see, this power has suddenly dropped down to nothing because this is now being charged up. So that's now charged up, and the power will come back in again. Isn't that fantastic? And that will work from almost anywhere. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can put a dispenser upgrade into this. Um, and you can interface items. So we need an interfa a dispenser upgrade. Let's have a look what other in upgrades we can do in here. So we can have a volume upgrade um, to increase the capacity. So add 5 litres of XP. And then you can put in a dispenser upgrade. So that allows you to feed experience and food. So let's do that. Go and get this dispenser upgrade from over there and come back in a second. Right, I'm back with the dispenser upgrade. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't made it yet. Have I? I thought I had done. I've made the security upgrade, so let's actually do put that one into our chest plate to start with. That's a tap lens because I forgot about that one. I think I didn't put it in. I put a dispenser upgrade, but I didn't put a security upgrade in there. So now we have a bit of protection from lava, which should be great. And you can see it going up. Now you'll see the list of things in here. Uh, I also installed into my chest plate a, um, a helmet, a, a dispenser upgrade and an entity tracker. I think it's the one I need, the entity tracker. And that, that was basically to debug drones, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But first of all, let's see if I can do this. I'm running a bit low on, um, I need the dispenser upgrade. That's what I was looking for. I'm running a little bit low on Lapis Lazuli and I have to go and do some more mining for that one. But there's probably plenty around, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. So now let's put this dispenser upgrade into here. So we've looked at these already. We've done the volume upgrade. The security upgrade basically stops it from blowing up. Yeah. So the upgrades for the next one was really just the dispenser upgrade. And then you'll suddenly you'll see you've got an interface for XP. So you can right click this. So XP handling is disabled. Let's enable it. Uh, we've got feeding mode, so we can actually feed ourselves. Only when, f uh, only feed when the provided fuel is fully utilised. Okay. Feed the player when he's not fully fed, and when the player has full health, only feed the player fully utilised. So we have different modes in that one. Uh, okay, switches off that bit. We know that already. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put onto here. One of the few pieces which we've got here, this is from the Ultimate Car Mod, the Fluid Extractor. I built one of those, they're not too expensive, it actually was a trick by I saw from Danny and Son doing this one. So let's put the Fluid Extractor on here, 
shift right click it and then let's put down a barrel well I've just conveniently got a barrel from rustic somewhere here we are let's put this one down here so now that's connected in so we can go along here and it should start to take my XP out of me yes it is look you can see my XP is going down and sure enough the XP is being filled up in here so the configuration of this thing has to be obviously has to be the right sides where's the sides interface going to da, 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 I don't I sent it energy where's the sides That's strange I thought there was a sides interface here no I thought it was on this side oh top pressure no nope, no problems I'd, all right it's disappeared maybe I have to take the dispenser upgrade out and you'll see here I've now got a full tank of this and my XP has stopped going down in fact I did another one just to test it that's it out so I've got 16 buckets of XP in that one and of course I could keep repeating this process I just snow landed on there huh? as if so there we are so that is that and that thing's actually really marvelous if you think about it it's really a useful a useful tool so now I've got no problems with pressure I've got no problems with charging my items everything's fully charged as you can see this is fully charged and this is fully charged I don't have to go around filling it up and anymore which is brilliant so next thing I said I was gonna build some a drone to do some sentry over there but let's start with a doing a sentry tower we have a minigun so let's this is a 10 bar minigun let's have this zero bar let's have a look at this one can we do this so it's a block of compressed iron which we can do it's um, a compressed iron a gold ingot and a cannon barrel so what we're missing is a gold and a cannon cannon barrel cannon barrel we probably might be able to do we have to do one of these first little pressure tubes um, I'm just wondering have I got I've got some around I wonder if I've got I'll just make another one because I've probably got enough let's have a quick look you need these all the time I've got 55 compressed iron in there that's good so we've got enough compressed iron to do that so let's let's finish building this thing off so we need that we need one of those if we get eight so of course that's fine by the way the cost of doing the um, cannons was about four stacks of well just over four stacks of for the jet boots I mean the jet boot upgrade was just about four stacks of compressed iron so it's quite a lot of iron to do for that one now if you've been watching my series you'll know that isn't a problem so now we need to do this one so we've got a cannon barrel and we just need a piece of gold oh, we've got one piece of gold left that's fine enough to do this thing let's take that out so at the moment is pressure is 10 bar how did that happen is that probably because I've got the it'll go up to 10 bar. I was hoping to show you going up never mind it's fully charged that's fantastic then we have to make some iron uh, so any ammo so we basically need one piece of gold one compressed iron and some gunpowder I'm about sure to go let's just go and get some from the mob farm or the, the results of the mob farm there's an, there's a few bits and pieces in here as you can see which is uh, quite interesting I also got another backpack and from the backpack I got some iron ore and I got some wood and I got some things I've thrown away already and 32 raw chickens and five apples uh, the backpack <laughs> it's quite uh, sweet very rare as it happens it's probably about the second one I've had from the mob farm and I've shot two skeletons with them so that's probably given me four backpacks now what do I want to do with all of this stuff I want to go and get the um, I wanted to go and put the iron away didn't I let's go and shove the iron away I've been using so much iron it's probably well worth sticking into the grinder of in here so let's get that ground up and pr processed into ingots uh, I want to get rid of these bits and put the backpack away I think somewhere I'll be back in a second when I've got everything prepared well here's the here's where I'm getting the, the products from the mob mob farm I'm just taking pieces out of it every once in a while I've got a fair few stacks of gold and a few a little bit of iron not too much but just tick in slowly and you keep it going it'll help you a bit so let's go and finish this off now so ammunition so uh, sentry tower takes four sets of ammunition so we need four of those so let's finish the sentry tower off now where is it so if I look for the uses of the minigun basically oh, I need yes I need two pieces of plastic which I haven't got with me I don't expect three pieces of iron and a minigun and that'll give us a sentry turret 
Uh, I shall just go and get those bits and come straight back again, unless I've got them in my chest here, which I haven't. I don't think I can make this one. I think I'm just missing the plastic. Let's double look at the uses of that again and just see if I can click it in. Yes, two pieces of plastic. I'll be back in a second. Right, I've got the two bits of plastic, so I'll make the sentry turret. And we'll also make some ammunition for this as well. So let's have a look at the ammunition here. So let's shift click that in. So I can make 20. I only want four. Well, actually, probably six would be good, but we'll do four to start with. I don't think they stack. No, they don't stack. So I'm going to do four. That's the range it can take in. Let's go and put this down somewhere where we can destroy a few mobs. Now they are here, look, as you can see. Oops, one. Get, get it. I have to get rid of it myself first. But here's a few more coming up. Wanting a bit of fun, so let's put it up here. Alright, I can jump high enough. Good. Let's put the turret down here, like that. And put into this the ammunition. Oops, and then, oops. And type at mob. Probably should do that first. Now you see it's doing such some stuff. Now let's put it uh, upgrades. I think it, the only one is a range upgrade. So let's put some more ammunition in there. And watch him do his stuff. Did he actually do anything else? Because I missed that. I don't think it was attacking me particularly, but. Uh, it might have been attacking the villagers if I do it didn't, didn't do that right. Anyway, the villagers are, are being busy breeding for me. That's great. So I just need to leave that here. So any mob that comes along here now is going to get well and truly zapped. So let's just come pick up the bits and pieces. I put some flowers down here because I thought if I want to ever get a mob myself, I just put some flowers and I can then pick him up because they walk, tend to walk down this way. So there we have the sentry turret. Now the next one would be the drone but I think I'm going to leave that till next time but, but before we go today let's have a look at the drone debugging because that's Im quite impressive if you remember the farmer let's go and have a look at the recipe I'll go over I'll go and pick up the, um, the program and come back well, there I am looking for the bits and pieces <laughs> these are the missing bits I've been looking for for ages <laughs> they got picked up by that drone i didn't expect them to get picked up by that drone i'll be honest with you i expected they didn't get picked up by the other one anyway i've basically reprogrammed this drone and put the program into that drone instead of having it in a debug um a network api so you can carry on work for us when we're going to do the next bit it goes so fast here i'm actually having difficulty walking i will be honest with you <laughs> but anyway it therefore takes just a few seconds to come along here and let's put this um programmer down here I put into the program uh, the farming one, which I haven't seemed to have got with me. I'll be back in a second with the farming program. So I've got the farming program. So let's just export that in, uh, into here, import the program, so we can then see what's going on here. Now, if I have a little bit of a look, I can be able to scroll this down a bit and we can see the whole program. And you'll, what's important to notice here are the colours. Now, oh, perfect, look at that. So now we've got, we go through start, and then it goes through blue, blue brown, orange. Is that lime? I'm not sure what colour that is. Yellow, possibly pink, orange, and then back standby, which is back to lime again. So let's have a look at this when the actual drone is doing something. So here we've got the drone, and what I have to do first of all is to activate it. So let's have a look at drone debugging. So we have to follow the widget, activate follow widget. So we press D on a drone. So we have to basically enable this one. And then we also need to make the entity tracker here. So there we've got, I've emphasized mob, but I don't need to do that. Let's press F1. The one I want is actually drones. We'll have to hold it down to F1. So we want drone. So drone is simply at drone, I think. Here we go. Match any drone entities. So we'll change that from being mob. Because I, when, I was, when I was doing my stuff, when I was mining, I had it on that so we press escape and we enable the entity tracker here and you'll see it's acquiring this target in it tells you about it so now we can actually you'll see there the colors now what's happening here is the colors are changing so it's going through all of the colors in the program so let's we can highlight both at the same time may not be able to do this let's just have a look yes there you go maybe we can do it if I put it to the side a bit here which is a bit awkward maybe I want to go down a block if I can but that's actually also quite awkward and if I get this like that 
yes you can just about see it's a bit hard I'm sorry about that but you can see it should going through blue brown and then it was I saw it yellow and then orange it's going faster than I can read it anyway so that's those are the different stages it's going on of course it's not going to be doing too much at the moment because it's winter time but you'll see that these little red puffs as it were are where it's actually scanning for the areas Wintertime plants don't grow in this mod pack at all. You can't bone meal anything, nothing. So it doesn't work at all. So that's what's going on here. But it's it's quite smart. That's, what does it say if I press D to debug now? I don't know what that does. Uh, it's actually a bit of a difficult... It's a bit of a difficult one because that basically means I'm going to straff right. I wonder if I get to here and press D, does it work? No, nope, it doesn't work. Anyway, you can see it's doing its thing and it's what it's doing. So when it's actually in operation, it will go off and it will do its farming. But there is a problem here. There's something's happening and I'm not fully understanding this. The farmer is supposed to be replanting these because it's always got a hoe. Or it should always have a hoe. And then it comes here and in the program it's required to do a hoe. Let's just check this one. So information, right click for options, requires a hoe. But it seems to be breaking the, the wheat and not replanting it. So I don't fully understand why it's doing that. So I've got 11 seeds in here. So let's put those back in again because it should be doing here. Of course, it can't do that one. So it looks like it's missing these blocks for some reason. Or, and this is earth, I think, from Rustic farm, Farmland for Rustic. So those are now going to be checked. You can see it's not going to check where I'm standing now, so that's great. Let's put that back again. And you see I've got quite a lot. I've even got that's cucumbers. I've got 59 giga pickles. <laughs> I'm not sure what the giggle pickers will use for that. So one of those recipes which is actually the only way you can find them was from a chest. Once a dungeon chest. Well I found one in a dungeon chest. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and learnt something new. Actually, the pressure of the drone's going down, even though it's actually sitting there. Now, that's interesting. Anyway, when it goes down enough, it will simply trundle off and it gets itself recharged. So, until next time, I wish you all the best. So, until then, bye for now.